Time for a nice second order nonlinear differential equation. And this structure is pretty fascinating in that you have the first derivative being multiplied by the second derivative. And on the left, on the right hand side, you have x and just the second derivative of y with respect to x. Now, one thing to note here is that there is no y term present in the equation. So you can make your life much easier by using a substitution where you let dy by dx equal to u. And this implies that d squared y by dx squared equals du by dx. So that transforms your problem into one of a first order differential equation. So this dy by dx term is just your u. The second derivative is du by dx. And you have x plus du by dx. And if you transfer this term onto the left hand side and you factor out the du by dx, you have u minus 1 times the derivative of u with respect to x being equal to x, which is a separable differential equation which can be solved pretty easily. So the integral of u minus 1 du equals the integral of x d with respect to x. And you can write the antiderivative on the left hand side as u minus 1 squared divided by 2 equal to x squared by 2 plus a constant of integration c sub 1 that I'm going to divide by 2 just so I can get rid of this factor. So you have u minus 1 squared being equal to x squared plus c sub 1. And this further implies, once you take the square roots, that u equals 1 plus minus x squared plus c sub 1. Now u here equaled dy by dx per our substitution, right? So now you have a you have another separable differential equation that you can solve pretty easily by integrating with respect to x, correct? So you have y equal to um, this integral using the linearity of the integration operator. The integral of 1 with respect to x is x, of course, plus or minus the integral of x squared plus c sub 1 dx plus another constant of integration c sub 2. And now our goal is to evaluate this integral that I'm going to call i sub 1. So if you let i sub 1 be equal to the integral, oh, this is an, this is an antiderivative of x squared plus c sub 1, the square root of it, uh, with respect to x, then you may be tempted to use a tangent substitution here. However, a much more efficient method would be to use a hyperbolic substitution. So if you let x be equal to uh, c sub 1, the square root of it, times the cinch of some variable phi, this implies that dx equals the square root of c sub uh, c sub 1 times the cosh of phi d phi. So that means i sub 1 equals the integral. Now inside you have c1 factored out and then you have the square of the cinch of phi plus 1 uh, all in a square root times the uh, cosh, uh, the square root of c sub 1 there times the cosh of phi d phi. Now this here is just the square of the cosh function. So uh, with the square roots and stuff you have uh, the square root of c sub 1 times the square root of c sub 1 which is just c sub 1 times again because the square root um, it cancelled out with the square above the uh, square of the hyperbolic cosine. So that cancellation yields cosh of phi times this cosh of phi which again gives you the square of the cosh of phi uh, d phi okay things are go looking good so far so if you uh, multiply by 1 by 2 and 2 at the same time and you can take this c sub 1 outside you have the integral of 2 times the square of the hyperbolic cosine of phi with respect to phi and this is in fact equal to uh, 1 plus the hyperbolic cosine of 2 times phi. Okay, again, this is cool. So we have c sub 1 by 2 times phi 
plus cinch of 2 phi by 2. And we already added the constant of integration up there. And now this is, we're currently in the phi world and we want to get back to the x world. So phi here, uh, we remember letting uh, the square root of c sub 1 times uh, the cinch of phi be equal to x. So this implies that uh, phi equals the hyperbolic, the inverse hyperbolic sine of x by the square root of c sub 1. And this term here is twice the product of cinch phi and cosh and cosh phi. And the twos just cancel out, so you're left with this product. And now the hyperbolic sine of phi as per our substitution is x divided by the square root of c sub 1. And the hyperbolic cosine of phi equals the square root of 1 plus the square of this thing here. So you have x squared by c sub 1, which can be written again as uh, c sub 1 plus x squared divided by the square root of c sub 1. And once you multiply these two terms, you're going to get um, x times x squared plus c sub 1 divided by c sub 1. And all of this will replace this term here and this phi term we've already dealt with it okay cool so let me just zoom out that means the integral uh, of x squared plus c sub 1 dx equals c sub 1 by 2 times uh, the uh, inverse cinch of x by the square root of c sub 1 plus uh, x times the uh, square root of x squared plus c sub 1 divided by c sub 1. Okay, again, this looks all fine and dandy. So finally, we have an explicit solution for y in terms of x, where y equaled, um, what was it again? Let me just scroll back upward. So it was x plus this integral here, i sub 1. Okay, cool. So that equals x. Um, plus or minus uh, c sub 1 by 2 times cinch. Uh, this was an inverse function. Yeah, exactly. The inverse cinch of x by the square root of c sub 1 plus x times the square root of x squared plus c sub 1 by c sub 1 plus some other constant of integration c sub 2. Okay, that was pretty nice and i hope you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe thank you see you next time